property made by Bob Smith at General Council. We as a congregation, as a worship committee in particular, decided to hold this service today because this is actually the weekend that Bob did the apology. Bob Smith at the time was our moderator, which is our most senior spiritual leader, elected by the community to lead us for three years as uh, one who guides and knows that God calls us into new places. When the apology is spoken at General Council, which it has done every General Council since then, everyone stands. So we're going to begin the litany. Judy McKinnon, who is the chair of the board, is going to uh, share this with me because it's, uh, the litany is quite long. But when it comes to the time for the apology, I will actually ask you to stand as you are able. Loving God, are your church practicing your love, justice, and peace in the world? Guide us by your Holy Spirit. You gave us the commandment to love and to teach her to follow. Guide us and build us up for the journey. We, the church, did not always realize how we were breaking the commandment and brought spiritual, social, political, economic, cultural, emotional, and physical suffering upon Indigenous peoples in Canada. Wake us up and guide us to the way forward together. Indigenous people are resilient. You remain faithful, giving them strength and courage. Help us to bring our faith and our strength together. In 1980, the faithful from the native pastoral charges across Canada with the support of the whole church, held national consultations to gather, share stories, organize, identify needs, find their voice, and to listen to elders like Gladys Taylor, Lavina Day, Jesse Salto, Gordon Woods, Gordon Stanhoff, and Dora Benson. We give thanks for the word of your spirit in your people and in at the first consultation in 1980 in White Bear, Saskatchewan, the Indigenous people asked the non-Indigenous people to leave the consultation for a time because they did not, they did all the talking and drowned out the voices of the Indigenous people. Help us to speak with and listen to one another in new ways. The Indigenous people formed the National Native Council including Thelma Davis, Alberta Billy, Floyd Stenhauer, Gordon Behrens, Murray Wenton, and Emily Oak, and hired Stan McKay as a national coordinator to do the work of the consultations between meetings. We give thanks that you call good and faithful servants to your church. The Native Council learned and followed the process and protocols of the church which depended on writing written reports. In March 1985, the Council's report to the General Council Executive recommended several important steps, including the formation of the All Native Circle Conference and training leadership for First Nations communities. Inspire us to your vision now, as you did then. The Council chose Alberta Dick Billy and Thelma Davis to lead the executive the Council's report. As they were about to enter the meeting, Alberta turned to Stan McKay and said, I think I'm going to ask them for an apology. We give thanks for the prophets who sent among us and for the citizens of the living. Alberta's request was shocking. The request for an apology wasn't in the report, was never discussed in the Council, the need for an apology was just in her mind and in her heart. Stan said to her, if that's what you need to do, then you need to do it. Continue to be praying to send your Holy Spirit among us, to startle us and move us in the direction of your justice. The executive, who were caught off guard, responded in utter confusion. The indigenous people did not know how Alberta would Alberta's request was out of order and not on the agenda. Yet, the executive were moved to respect her request 
and decided to work seriously on a response. We give thanks for the stir of audience. And so the church formed a working group that included Alberta and Stan to present the request to the 1986 General Council in Sudbury. The group created print materials to educate the church, even as they wondered if anyone would care to read them. They lived for a year and a half, preparing yet uncertain. Continue to give us perseverance to serve justice and open our hearts for the heart of life. The Native Council instructed organizers to bring the drum to the sacred fire in Sudbury so the people might dance and greet the apology together. We give thanks for the heartbeat of life. The indigenous people were not certain. Some asked, what if they don't apologize? The people did not know if they would be heard. But affirming hope and the call to a task that might fail, the elders said, it doesn't matter. We still dance. Continue to send your prophets among us to encourage us always. In 1986, about 80 indigenous people gathered in Sudbury for the National Aboriginal Ministries consultation alongside the General Council. Members of the consultation spoke to the court. We are asking for this apology from the church. Then they left the meeting and invited the Indigenous Commissioners to join them at the sacred fire kept nearby. We stand in silence with only you to hold us holy one. Aided from the consultation and a dozen Indigenous Commissioners gathered by the sacred fire on a cloudy day. Anishawapa elders Ark Solomon and Jim Donut offered teachings and led the people in prayer. By dusk, Indigenous people who performed the, from, the from the surrounding communities joined the circle, doubled the number who were waiting. They did not know what the church would decide to do, but waiting was not easy. What a blessing it is to see the circle grow larger and stronger. Elders Elizabeth Memnook, Murray Wetton, Stanley McKay Sr., Dora Benson, Reverend Dr. Johnson Marriott and others waited in the teepee near the fire. They were called to be the first to receive the response of the moderator on behalf of the United Church of Canada. It is hard to wait and live with uncertainty. Give us strength, hope, and patience now as you did then. Most of the general council followed the moderator down the hill and joined the people at the sacred fire. Hundreds of people were now gathered. After the moderator met with the elders, he came to the sacred fire and the people and spoke these words of the apology. Long before my people journeyed to this land, your peoples were here. And you receive the word of us, an understanding of creation and of the mystery that surrounds us all, that was deep, rich, and to be treasured. We did not hear you when you shared your vision. In our zeal to tell you of the good news of Jesus Christ, we were close to the values of your spirituality. We confuse Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and the height of the gospel of Christ. We impose our civilization as a condition of accepting the gospel. We try to make you be like us, and in so doing, we help destroy the vision you made of your as a result, you and we are poorer, and the image of the Creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we are meant to be brought to be. We ask you to forgive us and to walk together with us in the spirit of Christ, so that our peoples may be blessed and God's creation healed. After hearing the apology, the people danced. One man said he danced as he had never danced before. 
He hadn't dared to hope that the church would apologize. But the apology and the dance turned the whole church in a new direction on the path of the straight. As the people danced, the clouds disappeared, and the sky cleared, and the moon shone. It seemed that all creation and our creators celebrated this new thing. All glory is yours, God most holy. The next morning, the elders advised the indigenous people to simply acknowledge the apology. They told the people to take the apology back home for the people to hear and discern what it means to live into the apology and that we are entering a time that would not be easy. God of wisdom and grace, continue to walk with us. In, in 1988, at the 32nd General Council in Victoria, Elder Ed Edith Mendon, our late commissioner for the recently formed All Native Circle Conference, offered this response to the apology. The apology made to the Native people of Canada by the United Church of Canada in Sudbury in August 1986 has been a very important step forward. It is heartening to see that the United Church of Canada is a forerunner in making this apology to Native people. The All Native Circle Conference has now acknowledged your apology. Our people have continued to affirm the teachings of the Native way of life. Our spiritual teachings and values have taught us to uphold the sacred fire, to the guardians of Mother Earth, and to strive to maintain in harmony and peaceful coexistence with all people. We only ask of you to respect the sacred fire, the creation, and to live in peaceful coexistence with us. We recognize the hurts and feelings will continue amongst our people, but through partnership and walking hand in hand, the Indian spirit will eventually heal. Through our love, understanding, and sincerity, the brotherhood and sisterhood of unity, strength, and respect will be achieved. The Native people of the All Native Circle Conference hope and pray that the apology is not symbolic, but that these are the words and action of sincerity. We appreciate the freedom for culture and religious expression and the new spirit of the apology is creating. Let us unite our hearts and minds in the wholeness of life that the Great Spirit has given us. Open our hearts and our minds to receive this message Thirty years later, we are still seeing, waiting to see what the apology means. What effect has it had? Have relationships changed? How have we acted? What healing remains to be done? The church has taken many steps, but many of us still wonder what the apology really means. We are not here yet. Not all is forgiven, our hate hold between us. Great Spirit, unite us as we continue to walk towards justice, reconciliation, being family, and living with respect in creation.